Hi my friends, Nona with you here today to do a special art activity. It is inspired by a very special art uh, author and illustrator, Eric Carl, who recently passed away, but today on June 25th, we're celebrating his birthday. So in honor of all of his beautiful books, and his beautiful illustrations and his wonderful spirit of creativity and joy. I'm here to just show you some of the techniques similar to what Eric Carle used in some of his books. So depending on the age of your child and the stage of development of your child and the experience that they have using different tools and paints and such, adjust this accordingly okay but the most important thing is to remember there's no right or wrong way to be creative so no matter the age of your child let them take the lead that doesn't mean go crazy with paint all over the house but let them take the lead in the creativity so i have a few supplies and tools readily available you always want to have your supplies readily available before you start a project so I always like to have a tray of some type. This is like from a teacher's supply store, plastic tray, but you can also use a cookie sheet if you have that at the house. This is great to teach children to keep their materials or their paper together. Um, and also it contains the mess, <laughs> all right? So they know, okay, the paint stays on this space. So even if they get it on their hands and they really just wanna explore with the paint, they have their tray has to stay on the tray, okay? Um, I have another tray here where I have my paint set up and I've just shown you a couple of different ways to have your paint. For me, I never wanna have the whole bottle of paint available. I'm gonna have it up high or somewhere where my, my child can't reach it because I don't let them serve the paint, right? Um, if they're a little bit older, yeah, and it's okay if paint gets spilled, it's all right, that's gonna happen, but if this gets spilled, it's going to be a small amount of paint, all right? Or an egg carton. You might have an egg carton. This is just an ice cube tray from the dollar store. Um, or condiment, condiment cups. And they have lids, so if you want to save the paint, that works too. And then this could be like their workspace. So that's where you would put their paper on there, all right? So just some ideas to help save you a little bit of maybe frustration, but still let your child be creative, creative, okay? All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create papers. So the way Eric Carl did his illustrations was he would first paint paper. He would use tissue paper and paper of all sorts of textures, but he would use different types of tools to make textures in the paint. And he would create papers of all, just different colors, different colors and different textures. And he had drawers and drawers and drawers of red paper, blue paper, yellow paper, green paper, orange paper, so that when he did his, created his collages of illustrations, he would have all these different color papers. So that's the first step that we're gonna do. And I have just different tools. Hairbrush dish scrubbing brush, um, bubble wrap, pool noodle, cotton ball, feather, an old toothbrush. Don't use your same toothbrush that you brush your teeth with. <laughs> Fork, um, a car, toy car, foil, did I say that one already? And I have some Q-tips. I have a basting brush. This is just for painting, okay? Dollar store, all right? Um, and then I have cotton ball and I have a clothespin. And so I'm gonna create, I'll show you that before we start painting, I'm gonna put the cotton ball on the clothespin and that way it'll be fun way to paint or create textures, but it's something easy for your child to grasp. And you can also put the bubble wrap on that too. I'll show y'all that in a little bit. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is paint the paper and I'm gonna divide it into fourths you do not have to do this with your child. Let your child take the lead on creativity. And you know, like I said, depending on their age, or depending on the age of the kids you're working with, whether it's your child or whether you have a class of kids, um, or you're doing a camp, whatever you're doing, 
Think about the child and where they are. And you don't want to say, no, 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 we have to divide the paper in four pieces. No, I'm just showing you an idea. They might want to paint the whole paper red. They might want to paint the whole paper green, blue, yellow. You might end up with a gray paper. That's okay. Remember, it's the process, not the product of creativity. You might end up with something that you, in your mind, think, wow, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Or, oh my gosh, it's a big gray mess or a big brown blob. Encourage the child and let them know it's beautiful, whatever they created, all right? So, there's no right or wrong way to be creative. The first thing I'm gonna do is paint my paper. And I only had primary colors of paint. So this is a great little science investigation for kids. I mixed colors. I mixed the primary colors. I mixed two colors to get purple. And it's kind of a maroonish, but you can investigate with that and experiment with that and explore and see, we wanna add a little more blue, we wanna add a little more red to see the color there, red and blue. And you know, like I said, this is, this is a great time to educate kids on the science of color. All right, so I mixed blue and yellow to get green. And what two colors did I mix to get orange? Red and yellow. So to get purple, I mixed blue and red. To create green, I mixed blue and yellow. And to get orange, I mixed red and yellow. All right, so I'm just gonna get started and I'll leave my Q-tips in there. All right, so now I'm going to investigate with some of my textures, okay? I'm gonna try with a toothbrush and I'm just gonna brush over the paint. The other thing you can do is you can add more paint to the actual tool that you're using. And remember, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You might think, ah, that doesn't look like a texture. That's okay, look at that. You can also get the, the orange and brush it over on your other colors. That's, a, that's an idea. Um, I'm gonna use the car, but I'm gonna paint the wheels. I'm gonna paint the wheels, and I have that on, I'm gonna do that on blue. So I'm gonna add a blue to the wheels. And this is just, this is something, it doesn't, don't pick your child's favorite car. <laughs> All right, or maybe pick a dollar store car instead of a Hot Wheels brand name car. That's what I usually do. All right, so then I'm just gonna roll over that. Ooh, look at that texture. Okay, so if your child likes this, guess what they might wanna do all day? <laughs> At their painting station. They might wanna paint with a car. Is that okay? Yes, yes, but remember, what are you gonna tell them? Keep it in your space, keep it on the tray. Are you gonna go all over the wall with the car? No. No, and just encourage them. If they do that, depending, like I said, on the age and stage of your child, you might want to have paper towels. I have my paper towels right here. Always have your paper towels or your baby wipes available. All right, let's try another texture. Let's try a cute, I mean, a cotton ball. Oh, it's coming apart on the, some cotton is coming apart on the paper. Is that okay? Yes. And then look, I have some paint on it. Look at that. Look at that. And you know what? You don't have to tell your child. They, they'll, they'll explore and they'll create on their own. And they might come up with something you never thought of. All right, let's try bubble wrap. You might have this in your recycling. I'm gonna take my cotton ball off of my clothespin and put the bubble wrap on here. And for this, I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on there. I'm gonna put some yellow paint. I'm just gonna use a Q-tip. And you know what, if you don't have paint brushes, you don't have to go buy any, you can if you want to, 
or you can use Q-tips, or you can use your fingers. Make sure you use washable paint. <laughs> you always want to use washable paint. Don't accidentally buy acrylic paint because you will probably regret it. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little paint on there and then I'm gonna dab it on top of the green. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, that looks beautiful. And here's something that I run into sometimes. <laughs> you have one child who's like two or three or maybe younger because a one-year-old can do this with a little bit of help, a little bit of guidance, right? Maybe a bigger piece of paper or a bigger space. But then you have another child who's seven or eight and they might say, ew, he's making a big mess. He's ugly. Talk to them about we're all creative in different ways. None of our art is going to look the same. That's what makes it unique and creative. And then remind them that they were little, little once too, okay? So I added a little more yellow to that. And then I can also use that as my brush. Wow, I'm having so much fun. I love to paint. And I love to make a mess. I like my mess to stay contained though. Can be honest with you. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of red to this. Bubble wrap I think is my favorite. Okay, so next time you get a package in the mail or ask all your friends, hey, save that bubble wrap. Okay, so some other things. I have a pool noodle. Let's try the pool noodle. Let me get, um, let's do a texture, texture with blue. And those are just some good vocabulary words you can use with your child too. Textured. And, you know, ask them to describe the textures for you. It's okay if they don't have the vocabulary. Or maybe you don't even have the vocabulary. You might say, hmm, I don't know what word to describe that. Does it look rough? Does it look smooth? Does it look flowery? Just, that's okay. Remember, there's no right or wrong way to be creative. Okay, I'm gonna tr see this. Okay, dollar store, dollar store. And you don't have to cut the whole pool noodle, just cut like that much off of the end and you can still use it at the pool. Okay, let's see what this is gonna do. I'm gonna put it on top of the, how about if I put it on top of the orange square? Oh, wow. And they might want to just get this and that's easy to hold. Look at that. Like for a toddler, something easy to grasp and hold. And they might want to just paint with that. Is it okay if all the colors get mixed together? But wait, we're learning about texture. You can't mix the colors. Yes, they can. And that's all right. Now, I would be respectful if you have several kids working together, one or two, whether they're your own kids, grandkids, or you have a class of kids, teach them to respect each other's space. Okay, that is important. They can do what they want to do on their paper. Mm, mm, I want to help him. No, 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 this is your paper. That's, that's his paper or her paper. So look at that. Wow. All right, so some other tools, like I said, hairbrush. I wonder what that does. No, I don't want to mess mine up. <laughs> That's okay, it's mine. Okay, I'm gonna add a little red, put a little red on the brush. So this looks really fun. You're gonna to wanna to have plenty of paper available because once they finish one, you can take that down and put another piece of paper up. Like I said, make sure, oh, we didn't use the foil. Let's use the foil, let's try the foil. And take my bubble wrap off of my clothespin and put the foil on there. I don't know, I wonder what that will do. Mm, let's see, let's use some green for a texture. 
and I'm just going to use my Q-tip. You know, and like I said, depending on the age and stage of your child, some of them are going to be very particular about keeping the paint with the right Q-tip or paintbrush color. Some will use the yellow Q-tip in the orange and the green and the blue and the purple, and that's okay. So depending on your child, your children, you want to adjust your materials accordingly. Have an ice cube tray or a egg carton for each of them, all right? You wanna teach them to share, but that's something that they learn. They learn, especially if they're different ages or different stages. Or some kids, they just don't care if the paint gets mixed. You might have an eight-year-old who just doesn't care. They're not concerned with that. They're just concerned with creating. So keep that in mind. Okay. All right. So I had so much fun painting with y'all today and kind of just showing you a little bit about the first step in Eric Carl's creativity and doing his or creating his illustrations I like to have fun and create and we're all we can all be artists and remember there's no right or wrong way to create all right so next comes the part that we all might not like and that's the cleanup so don't forget friends to help your mom or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa or your teacher or whomever helped you paint, help them clean up. And grown-ups, keep in mind, depending on the age and stage of our child, that's how they're gonna be able to help accordingly. Okay, so thank you so much for, for coming and painting and creating with us today. And I look forward to seeing you all again. Have a great day.